Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another Small Engines Questions and Answers. I just want to let you guys know we've had one of the worst winters here in decades. We've had over 8 feet of snow fall since the beginning of December. Now a YouTuber questioned me about that. He said, how come in your video you only showed 3 feet of snow? Well, the reason for that is when the snow falls, it packs. So if you get 8 feet of snowfall, you're not going to have 8 feet on the ground. It just packs down and it's going to be less than half of what actually fell. In addition to all that snow, we've had really cold weather here as well. And I want to thank you guys for all the comments on my promo video. It's actually my trailer video for my YouTube channel. There was a really good response from you guys and I want to thank you guys again for that. Also, if this is the first time you watch my videos, what I do in today's video is I answer questions on small engines which I receive from my viewers. I'm going to start off with a chainsaw question today. A YouTuber asked me the other day, why isn't there any oil getting on the chain of my chainsaw? Well, there's going to be a few answers to that question. First of all, the worst case scenario is that your oil pump isn't working anymore on your saw. But more often what I come across is that people's bars are just full of sawdust right inside the groove over here. Basically the sawdust builds up inside the groove here and it soaks up all the oil going to the chain. That's due to a lack of maintenance and it can really wear out your parts quickly. So what you want to do is regularly take your saw apart, take the bar off and the chain, clean inside the groove here with this tool. You just basically run it inside the groove and it helps to get all the sawdust out. A clean chainsaw is a happy chainsaw and it's going to run a lot better for you and last a lot longer. In another question, somebody asked me, why is it important to clean the exhaust port on my chainsaw? Well, the reason for that is if there's a lot of carbon buildup on the port, it could break up in little pieces and go in your cylinder, wreck the cylinder and the piston and the rings, and then it's going to cost you a lot of money to repair that. You could end up with a problem like this where it's all scored, and oftentimes it's not even worth buying an OEM cylinder kit. It'll cost at least half or just as much as buying a new chainsaw. So a little bit of preventive maintenance can go a long ways. I'm just going to show you on this older steel saw here how the port needs to be cleaned on this one. You can see all the carbon built up on the port and that's not a good situation because like I said it can fall apart and go right inside. And you can also see small bits and pieces at the bottom as well that are just ready to come off. How do you clean that? Well you can use a small scraper. You can also use a shop vac to make sure you suck it all out. You may want to move the piston up where you don't see the rings like this to block off the port. It'll help prevent carbon from going inside the cylinder if the piston's up like this when you clean it. Also another tip for today is a lot of two-cycle equipment will have a spark arrestor like this, a small screen on the muffler. Usually you're going to find that behind a cover like this. Now what can happen is this little screen can get plugged up with carbon and it's going to prevent your chainsaw or your other two-cycle equipment from running properly. So this is another thing you can do for preventive maintenance on your equipment to make sure that it runs good. Also make sure you use the correct oil gas mixture to prevent this as well. You can also clean this with a wire brush or use a propane torch to burn off the carbon. I do have a video or two that shows how to clean these little screens and what I'll do is post a link to one of them under today's video. Another question I get asked often is what's your favorite chainsaw chain? Well, my favorite chainsaw chain is by far the steel chain. The reason for that is I find it stays sharper a lot longer. The metal seems to be much harder than other chains I've worked with. And it's a quality made product. If you're looking for a really good chain, I highly recommend that you buy a steel chain. You don't have to have a steel chainsaw to use steel chains. You can just go to your local steel dealer and they'll match up a chain for whatever chainsaw you have. You might find it a little bit more pricey, but I highly recommend it anyways. It's well worth the extra few dollars to have a much better chain. Question I got the other day about these little generators is what type of spark plug goes in there? Well, here's the plug. It's an NGKR. It's CR4HSB. And it's a smaller spark plug. You'll find these at your local Honda dealer or where they sell Honda power equipment. It's not a very popular spark plug. But if you do small engine repair, it doesn't hurt to keep a few in stock just in case you have to use one one day. And by the way, I'm going to replace this spark plug because it's getting pretty black. And sometimes when they get pretty black like that, they can tend to foul up. So for preventive measures, if your spark plug is black like this, just replace it. 
you won't go broke replacing spark plugs and it can save you a lot of headaches down the road. And by the way, this little generator is actually an inverter and it's a four stroke. It's nice and quiet. People use these for their motor homes or campers. And I think they're a good little unit. A few weeks ago, I posted a picture of this plastic or nylon camshaft from a Briggs and Stratton engine from a lawnmower. And somebody asked me, how can it last so long? Well, I'll assume because it's very hard. Somebody commented that it's made of nylon and there is an actual piece of metal in the center, as you can see. And if you look after your equipment and change the oil regularly, there's no reason why this shouldn't last a long time. Although I must say that I do prefer when these are made of metal, they're obviously much stronger. What I have here is a blower that just came in and I'm going to quickly show you what happens when a Tecumseh engine over revs. Well, take a look at this. This is where the electric starter used to go. And you can see that the rod came right through the engine. And that block is very damaged. If it was a tiny little hole, sometimes people can fix them. But in this case, the block is done and the engine as well. There may be some parts inside that are salvageable, but it's going to have to be taken apart first. Another quick tip I want to show you here is the importance of keeping your muffler bolts tightened up on your Tecumseh engine on a snowblower. As you can see here, it vibrated so much that it wore a hole through the muffler. This muffler isn't that old actually, but you can see it's got a massive hole in there. And the other thing too that can happen is your threading holes can get all stripped as well from the vibration. I did post a quick tip video showing why it was important to keep the locking plate here in place at all times and it's to prevent this exact same thing from happening. Last tip for today is don't keep your spare key tied to the existing key that's in your engine. This is a snowblower engine by the way and they do have keys like this because if you lose the main key you're going to lose your spare key along with it. I just thought I'd tell you guys that because I often see snowblowers that come in my shop and the spare key is tied to the existing key that they have in the engine. What I'm going to do is take off the spare key. So that'll be it for today's Q&A guys. Make sure to subscribe. You can follow me on Facebook and Google Plus and have yourselves a great weekend. Mm -hmm.